So we'll we will get into that. Uh, look, I'm not gonna lie. This is it's a blow. I mean, it's a blow, and and not just re- replacing Michi as I as I said last night. Replacing Michi is just not replacing Michi. There's more to this than just oh we're losing Michi Johnson. Now two of the guys, Talon Cooper and B.J. Mack, you were already aware that South Carolina was gonna lose, but. This is a little bit more now. You know, you lose another piece to your puzzle uh, that you now have to go out and replace. South Carolina will now have to replace half of their scoring from this season. They average 72 points per game. They'll have to replace 36.6 of that. Uh, last year, South Carolina made 263 three-pointers. Those three players made 166 of those. Uh, last year, South Carolina averaged uh, 36 rebounds a game. Uh, those three guys averaged 14 of those. You're now replacing the core of your team. You have some nice pieces behind it, but to just think, well, we'll just go to the transfer portal and we'll just scoop up a guy better than Michi Johnson, Talon Cooper, B.J. Mack. Now you're having to replace a true core, three-fifths of your starting lineup. That's why it's a little more than just, oh, okay, we're just replacing Michi Johnson. And quite honestly, anybody you go out and get, doesn't have two years of experience in Lamont Paris's system. They don't have the the, the uh, what I would say is the leadership of the locker room like he was going to have. Somebody's going to have to come in and integrate themselves into the locker room. This one's a little bit different than just oh we'll just go find someone who averaged 15 points last year and bring them in. Yeah, big big change. Good thing Lamont has a heavy wallet right now, and he's going to have to go ahead and go earn that money, sir. Congratulations. You've gotten paid. Now go make your money, son. Yeah, 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 yeah. You go earn, go earn mm-hmm. that $4 million there. Mm-hmm. So we'll get into that. Uh, interesting yesterday. I'm trying, Preston. I'm trying. But but Lenore Sellers is going to just suck me back in. There you go. He's, he's, he's going to be the guy that just brings me back in and that I, I'm just kind of like, yeah, uh, Lenore Sellers, all right, fine. I'm hyped. I'm hyped because yesterday a lot of freshmen – I know this sounds kind of stupid, but a lot of freshmen don't just carry their, that themselves that way in a in one of their first press conferences. This is why people have been excited about them the whole time. This is why people have been excited. I'm looking forward to hearing what particular soundbite got you so excited. I don't know if there was any one particular because I thought it was pretty vanilla in terms of it. But I do, having interviewed freshmen or, or high school seniors, j- juniors as well, having interviewed them and me just being a – a very unassuming 5'7", if I'm lucky on that day, a guy with a, just a little one of those little handheld mics and hearing players kind of stutter. and body. I'm big into body language on that. How comfortable do you feel? I don't know if you remember from your playing days, guys like that you could just look at and be like, man, they just don't look comfortable in front of the mic or they don't look comfortable, you know, kind of having to deal with media, not big old fast Pass rushing defensive lineman. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a skill that you're taught, and that's not something that you've practiced your whole life. So yes, anybody that's put in front of a microphone, it is extremely intimidating. I mean, we hear we hear people all the time when you, when you know you call in with a point, and then all of a sudden the, you're on air, and it's uh 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 uh. uh. So yes. Putting a microphone in front of somebody's face is difficult, and it is it does take a special skill set for somebody to be able to answer questions like do you, that. Do you remember your first? foray into the media room and and having to answer questions like what is that or or you've always obviously you do this you, you're a pretty comfortable talker no uh, not, I have, no 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 i have not always been a very comfortable talker that's something a skill that i had to develop but as i said i have developed my skill speaking in front of non-caring 15 year olds in world geography class so okay. if i can talk to them about ancient greece I can talk to anybody about anything. There you go. So I've developed the skill. Lenore Sellers uh, talking yesterday. So we'll get into that, play some audio from him. Uh, I got a little involved last night. I was ready ready to go to bed. I was ready to call it a day. And as I'm right before I'm going to bed, I look on Twitter, and it turned out up at up in Iowa City, West Virginia was giving Iowa all they wanted. There and I, I couldn't help it. I flipped over. I flipped over, and I got the Caitlin Clark experience. Mm-hmm. I watched Iowa kind of pull away there in that game. It was it was one that it looked like I was I was pulling for West Virginia. I so was, you wanted the upset. I was if I'm gonna tune in, I wanted that upset. I was actually very torn on that. Uh, if if 
Iowa was not in the LSU regional, I would have definitely been on the West Virginia bandwagon. This but is the conversation I was having yesterday about Middle Tennessee State. We wanted LSU to win, lose, but then we wanted them to lose yet because we want to see them play Iowa. So that's that's the same thing I, I was saying. I was yes, I was I was going back and forth on on what I wanted to see. I, I'll be honest, I've never really sat down and watched Caitlin Clark play basketball. I've I've never gone out of my way. But, oh, okay, I was playing there. Let me let me see what this is all about. So last night, probably watching the final, I think it was about eight minutes, seven or eight minutes was the most I've seen. I don't think I I don't know how she would classify herself playing. Um, I don't know what she would exactly kind of tell you she did. It was good. It wasn't I wasn't like blown away. She had thirty two last night, but. Kind of down the stretch, she got some help from some of her other teammates. It was a what I would have called a team effort victory in the in the fourth quarter. Yeah, of course, that's what that's what they do. She's she's more of the volume ish type shooter. She's going to get her shots up, and the team depends on her to do that. Um, but yeah, I was I and LSU are very similar in, in the fact that they are very beatable. They have stretches where they don't score a lot of points, and both of them look as if. They may or may not make it. We'll see how that. We'll see how this goes. So I'm I'm really intrigued by that seemingly upcoming matchup. Uh, if you are interested and you didn't pay attention last night, Indiana knocks off Oklahoma. Felt the, like that was coming. The four seed there knocks off the five seed. So the South Carolina regional will now feature the top four seeds there in the Gamecocks. They'll be taking on Indiana. That game will be at a late afternoon game on Friday, 5 o'clock, South Carolina and Indiana. Uh, according to ESPN, it will be on ESPN. Prior to that, prior to that game at 2.30 on Friday, Oregon State and Notre Dame. So the 1, 2, 3, and 4 seed all advance. And by the way, the, the majority the majority of this is chalk. Uh, Duke is the 7 seed. They are the highest seed that is advanced in the women's bracket to the to the Sweet 16 uh, across from South Carolina. You've got Iowa 1, UCLA 2, LSU 3, and Colorado 5. Uh, you also have Texas 1, Stanford 2, North Carolina State 3, and Gonzaga 4 in the other bracket. So it's the women's bracket. And I was paying attention to this yesterday. It, it said the opening weekend, if you will, of the men's tournament, Preston, was all about Goliath. David had been re removed. Of Are the, you of the women's tournament or no, the, the men's, men's the men's? And it's definitely David. David definitely got removed as it as it pertains to the women's tournament when all four one seeds uh, have moved on, so forth and so on. Uh, all the one seeds in the men's it, because again, if, if you look at if you look at the men's bracket, again North Carolina State is your eleven seed, but I don't know if they're your typical eleven seed. I guess I guess you say they're not because they had to play their way in. But other than that, Clemson's the sixth seed. It's there. There are. I think. I think this goes back to our conversation. There are no Cinderellas left. There are what I would say is no true Cinderellas left. Just the way you like it. Just the way. Oh, I gotta admit, very happy for this weekend. Already counting down to Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Already counting down. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. We'll talk more about this Michi Johnson transfer when we come back. Uh, we we'll either we we'll also let you hear directly. From Michi Johnson. Hear from the man himself. I, I do give him all the credit in the world for doing this. And, and we, uh, I mean, he. he I, uh, I give him. I give him credit. We'll let you hear. We'll let you hear. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. It is the early game.
Bill Gunner for Love Chevrolet. And with 2024 officially in, we are rolling along at Love Chevrolet. It's in with the new, and that is a lot of new right now. Tahoes, Suburbans, Camaros, the Red Hot Silverado. And you know what? With 14 acres of brand new Chevys, you're going to find it in your favorite color and trim. That's right. They're there, and they're ready for you to drive home. All that inventory means selection and savings for you because that's what Love Chevrolet believes in. 14 acres of brand new Chevys. The $1,000 low price guarantee and a customer service staff, sales staff that is absolutely second to none. Trust me on that. The way they took care of me a couple years ago, they will do the exact same for you. That's why they've been in business for over 60 years, making sure that they follow the principles of integrity, first class, hassle free sales, and the lowest price possible. So go visit Love Chevrolet today, I 26 and Harbison between Lowe's and Frankie's Fun Park. And together, let's drive. No major slowdowns this morning out on the highways. Uh, we are looking at just one that came in, Highway 321 at I-20. So aside from that, traffic flow not too shabby this morning. And as far as your forecast is concerned, we're looking for maybe a late stray shower today, 70 for the high, some thunderstorms possible tomorrow, 72, and morning showers on Thursday, 66 for the high. But then we start warming up. For the remainder of the week into the weekend and uh, by really by Sunday we could hit low 80s but right now got to get through this morning it's 54 on the early game
619 as we get you up and get you going here on your Tuesday morning, March the 26th, as we are hurtling towards Easter weekend and the very end of March and the beginning of April and more spring football and the Final Four and the Masters and the Heritage and South Carolina now will have to enter the transfer portal, Preston Thorne, and they'll have to go digging and looking as uh, they're going to need to replace now three of the five starters from this year's record-setting basketball team and NCAA tournament team. Uh, Joel hit me up last night. Hit might, might have hit both of us up. I know I read it uh, and basically said, yeah, this is why I said enjoy this year. Tweet of the year. Yeah. Uh, Text of the year. MVP. Uh, he said, you know, you don't know what's going to happen, and we don't know. You know, if Michi Johnson's looking around, who knows what else on that roster is at least getting, I mean, I hate to say it like this, but it's the truth. It's it's being naive if you think it's not happening. Who else on that roster is getting offers that at least entice them to see what else is out there? Yeah, that's the really curious thing to me is this. How did Michi get to South Carolina? Did we recruit him? Provocative, provocative out of, question. Out of high school? Do you not know or are you asking? I'm asking. Yeah, there is a there was a very close relationship with he and Lamont. Yeah. Um, and uh, Where did he come from? Ohio State. Yeah, so he came from the transfer portal. Oh, yeah. He's from leaving the... out in the transfer portal. So let's relax a little bit on like, oh, guys, this guy came in the transfer portal. So. There is this idea of a two-way street. There's Yes, there's probably our guys are being offered, but guess what? We're probably offering people also. This is the game. It is. It is the game. You're 100% right on that. This, I mean, you saw it more so, I think, last year with football when it felt like a lot of South Carolina was gutted with Marshawn Lloyd and then Gilbert Edmond, who's come back, by the way, who's come back, uh, Jordan Burr. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that's another thing going on to what you just said is th this is a two-way street. You, you, you can't be, look, you can't be mad at Jermaine Cousinard for leaving when his coach is let go, but accept Spencer Rattler when his coach was let go and he transferred out, you know? Or I, I guess I, I say let go when Lincoln Riley moved on from Oklahoma. Yeah, we. I, you would assume, this is what our assumptions, and I think it's in the old old paradigm is that you would assume that a player comes, has years of success, is on a winning team, that that would be the thing that would make them stay. Obviously, they're not playing by those same types of rules and or they don't have those same, they're not of those same values. But the reason that Michi came was because he was coming with a coach. And so it would be one thing I think it, it hurt, maybe stings a little bit different if, say, if it was a hometown guy or a home state guy or even in, uh, somebody that they initially recruited, but that's not what it was. It, he came through the transfer portal, and so I would imagine if you come through the transfer portal, it's like, oh, I, I did it once. I can do it again. I I, th I think I think part of this is is a, the fear of, man, that was a lot of fun with it basketball. Was. That was a lot of fun. Let's do that again. Oh, now it's going to be harder. I mean, Unfortunately, there is a portion of the fan base who's conditioned under Frank Martin that saw roster turnover each and every year and the inability to build uh, chemistry. And and that's, you know, again, that that is something. This this fan base in terms of basketball has been scarred more than 90% than out there just because, again, that's why we were so excited. That's why we jumped on in mid-January, maybe early January, and was like, man, boy, let's enjoy this. Let's get into the bracketology. But don't uh, we feel like this is a better suited coach? Like the culture is a different thing, so we might not see the turnover? Yeah, they won. I mean, so, yeah, but... but no, just different personality in general. I... When you win, we all believe different things. And, and we're going to find out. He's got to go back into the transfer portal and do what he did. Um, and he did a phenomenal job. And there's no reason he can't do it again. But you also look at a school like Arkansas, who has kind of tried to make a living off of this, and it completely backfired this year. Now, they've Arkansas had, I believe, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, back-to-back -back elite eights. 
I believe. Okay. And and then you saw what happened this year with the transfer portal. Let's let you listen. This is Michi Johnson yesterday. He went on Instagram Live for all you young kids and cats out there. I got to admit, I didn't know there was an Instagram Live. But all right, he goes on Instagram Live, and instead of putting out the typical Preston um, post, I guess you will, he addressed it head on. I like I like how he did it. Give him credit for doing this and for not hiding behind a post that we're then told to respect his decision. But here you can hear if you haven't heard, if you don't have Instagram live, everybody raise their hand. Thank you. I don't have it. <laughs> Neither does Preston. Uh, uh, Jen, no. Okay, none of us have Instagram live. No, I do. Oh, you do? Okay, so Jen is the kid of the group of us with Instagram Live. But here's Michi Johnson. It's about two minutes yesterday, kind of thanking the South Carolina fan base and bidding them farewell. But yeah, I just want to say I appreciate all the fans out there from USC, bro. Like, it was a great two years. You know what I'm saying? Great two years. And uh, definitely had some of the most fun I ever had in my life. You know what I'm saying? Coming there. Um, but at the end of the day, where we at now, I just got to make the best decision for me. There's going to be so many talks. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was talking to these people doing this, doing that. Like, I haven't talked to nobody yet. I haven't did it today. Like I said, like most people don't understand. Like I love, I love South Carolina. You know, I, I learned a lot about coming out here, um, and I appreciate the university for everything. You know what I'm saying, Coach Paris, the whole staff, everybody. Like they really took care of me, made me feel like family. You know, every game, everybody made me feel like family, um, especially being so far away from home with everything. But uh. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, a lot of people going to say what they want. Like I said, people are going to talk about loyalty and stuff like that. At the end of the day, like, most of y'all know I'm my position, so y'all not going to understand, you know what I'm saying, what it is and, uh, you know, why certain things got to be done. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like I said, I got to do what's best for me and my family. Um, and that's that. You know, like, but all all love still with SC, everybody here. All love with the, tr- uh, with the coach and staff. You feel me? Like, like I said, they took care of me since day one. Everybody, you know, took me in since day one. Um, you know, and at, at the end of the day, I had to, I had to get all this on my own. Like people gonna say what they want, but I had to make the name. I had to do this. So, like I said, all glory to God still too. Um, and yeah, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some people gonna be hurt. Some people not gonna understand. But uh, again, it's the best decision I had to make for me and my family. Um, and there's no bad issues, no bad blood. But uh, South Carolina, you know what I'm saying? South Carolina was was great to me and my family. Um, you know, if anybody could come here after and not making a bad decision, you know, Coach Paris is a great coach. He's he's very, very good at being able to develop players and take their game to the next level, which he did with me. So, again, all love go to them. I have notes. All right, let's take a break. A lot you, of notes. If I... I have thoughts. He has notes, and I'm sure you do too. 803 404 6100. That was Michi Johnson last night addressing his transfer on Instagram Live. Uh, just so we know, Jen, does that, does that, if he, if he left it up, if he hadn't deleted it, is it, would it still be up, or is this one of the Instagram Live? Is this one of the things yeah, that. Yeah, it'll still be up. Okay. So you could probably go and do that, but we will, we will get to Preston's notes. We'll get some thoughts. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, She Jen Jensen. It is the early game. Preston, let me tell you about my friends at Integrated Media. Listen, it's time to get ready. We've told you all year to get ready for the spring and the summer. Well, guess what? That time of year is here. So what are you waiting for? Get your Samsung Terrace TVs waterproofed. Get Sonos outdoor speakers for TV and music. 
Wi-Fi that works both indoors and outdoors. So if you want to be inside watching the game, talking to somebody outside, whatever you want to do, Integrated Media can help that happen for you. And you can do my personal favor, which is to control all your devices from just one remote. From home theater setup to adjusting your thermostat or monitoring your security systems from your cell phone, Integrated Media is the company that you need to call. So call Nathan and Michael at 803-948-8327. That's 803-948-8327. Or reach them online at integratedmediainc.com. That's online at integratedmediainc.com. Slowdowns out there include Highway 321 at I-20. That is the only reported accident we have right now. 70 is going to be our high today. Maybe a late stray shower coming in. Tomorrow, some thunderstorms are possible and a high of 72. 66 on Thursday with some rain, but by the weekend, it gets to be sunny and uh, we'll be in the low to mid-70s, even possibly getting up to 80 by Sunday. So we'll take that as we get into the 1st of April, but... Uh, Right now, 54 on the early game.
Reminder that we got some baseball tonight over at Founders Park. Again, as you heard Jen mention, could be some rain moving in. I think a little bit later, though, than 6 o'clock. Uh, 6.30 is game time. 6.15 is the pregame right here on 107.5 The Game. And guess what? You can go to 107.5thegame.com and register for the Palmetto Citizens FCU Grand Slam giveaway. You could win up to $600 because each and every game, $25 is added to the pot if a Gamecock hitter does not get a Grand Slam. And so far, we've got none of those. So there's $600 in the pot. You can win it all tonight if a South Carolina batter hits a Grand Slam. What you need to do is go and register. Go to 1075thegame.com and register for the Palmetto Citizens FCU Grand Slam giveaway. Again, go to 1075thegame.com and check that out, the Palmetto Citizens FCU grand slam giveaway again six hundred dollars in the pot right now um we just let you listen to michi johnson that was him on instagram live as he i guess tried to explain his reasoning maybe is that what is that the way to call it for transferring out from south carolina a university and a coach there's a lot to unwind from that Instagram live two minute seven second clip um, because I was going to say very quickly, Preston, a coach in a university that made Michi Johnson. Michi Johnson was a broken basketball player when he arrived at the University of South Carolina. He he had been injured. His career as a top sixty recruit had not gone at Ohio State the way that he had wanted. He came looking for a fresh start, and it was Lamont. Paris and South Carolina that afforded him that opportunity that developed him as he spoke of and created the player that will now be transferring out he is going to test the waters by the way of the NBA let's be clear about that he may not end up at any college he may actually just go on to the NBA I personally don't see that but all it takes is one to like you right Sean Smith it's all it takes is one to like you uh, but that was an interesting two minutes, seven seconds, and you took notes. Yeah, I just took notes. I was just trying to get the general tone and tenor of what what he was doing. And the overall, my overall feeling of listening to this, and this may be going into theme, it's just general sadness, man, because this young person, he didn't seem happy about making a decision. He didn't feel jubilant about the next spot that he was going to be. He didn't feel excited about the next chapter in his life. He, it, it sounded very resigned, and it it kind of made me it made me saddened that at that age, this these are the, these are the types of decisions that I as a middle aged man have to make where I'm not happy, but there's trade offs and all this type of stuff. But at 20 years old, you know he's talking about doing things what's best for him and his family, and it's just like man, it's unfortunate that they that he has to have put himself in this type of position where this is the state of what he's doing. And that that was my overall. Th- now, there's some inner details of this, which I think funny, but that's my general takeaway as I listen to this. It, didn't, it doesn't feel triumphant. It doesn't feel the way I would think it would feel if you're moving on to a better situation for yourself. Yeah, it's interesting, and I'm not uh, – we're nitpicking. I'm nitpicking a little bit on this because you had the phone going off. Oh, well, it was total, total Gen Z. There was a phone going off. There was a dog. There was two phones. It was a lot happening if you watched the video. Doesn't Michi have – Michi's got a dog? Yes, I, uh, there was a dog in the video. Uh, just to make sure, because we got to stop pumping up these dogs, Juice Wells and what was it, Rover or whatever, that got got the, the family dog pack of food and the dog looked exceptionally fat and whatever. And now Michi, because I think there was some discussion about Michi's dog earlier in yeah, the year. There was a dog. But but I, I don't know how jubilant, I don't know how excited he's supposed to sound in a video where he is addressing the South Carolina Nation. I just I don't I don't know how much sincerity there is when you talk about it's all love, when you talk about how great this place has been for you, when you try to convince people you're doing what's best for you. Well, I can't question the sincerity. I don't know him like that. I do question if he understands what all love means. Right? We can both mutually agree to part. That does not mean necessarily that it's all love or does anybody understand that once you leave someplace or once you leave, that is done. We can still be cordial with each other. We can still talk to each other. I can still say, yeah, that's my guy. But 
the idea of it's all love, I don't know if they necessarily understand that. You can't just have this all love. Sometimes when you make a decision, you draw a line in the sand, and that's just what it is for human relations sometimes. There is, to me, an aspect of this, and I, I brought this up after the Jordan Birch situation, uh, and I really think more and more about it after the Juice Well situation. Um, there is a situation, there is a, there is now an underlying, I don't know if it's an issue because I don't know if college kids care, but they don't have a home now. Uh, Juice Wells, no offense to Juice Wells, nobody wants to see him come back here at, when his career is over. Nobody's going to want to see him come back and be honored and talked about for his one really good year. Uh, nobody at James Madison is going to want him to come back. And quite frankly, He's going to go to Mississippi for a year, and unless it's just some kind of NCAA-esque record-setting year, when Antoine Wells has kids and maybe wants to take them back to his alma mater or his school, where's he going to go? Uh, Jordan Birch, no offense to him, local kid. Where's he? I don't think people want to see him on the sideline at a University of South Carolina game. I, I don't think that that people in Oregon are going to really care about a kid from South Carolina, unless he does something absolutely spectacular. Spencer Rattler is the very rare case where he came here, and even though his record was 13-12, and 12, was embraced by everybody. Spencer Rattler is going to be able to come back here. He's not going to be able to go to Oak, Oklahoma, but Spencer Rattler is probably going to be the extremely rare exception of what is now the transfer portal because I don't – no offense to Michi. It's a very nice two years statistically, and obviously a lot of fun this year. People, I hope, don't hate him. I hope they don't go on social media and, and go after him. But I don't know if that means you have to be happy if he comes back and they show him on the video screen. Does getting your degree from the university make a difference? Because, like, Spencer, okay, this is technically his alma mater because he's gotten his degree from here. So do we offer up the love a little bit more if they go ahead and graduate from here? I just think about it. Not in terms of South Carolina, because the easiest thing to do is, yeah, it becomes our guy, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, Rocket Sanders is, I maybe, I don't know, maybe he's going to get his degree. I've got to be honest. I don't know where he's at in terms of graduation. Um, but he, he's going to be about a one-year one year guy. I mean, unless it's, unless it's some kind of phenomenal year. I mean, just absolutely phenomenal year. Is South Carolina going to be, after, after this year, like, yeah, come on back afterwards, and we'll throw your – Video highlights up on the board. We'll welcome you back. And I know Arkansas is not going to want him back. I, that to me, because Preston, and you can speak to this better, the relationships and the friends and everything that you built and being able to go back to that university. And I mean, that's something that nobody can ever take away from you. Well, I mean, it's, first it starts with the relationship with, that you build with you and your friends. Now, that relationship is built through going through tri triumphs and struggles and adversity and going through those tough times. The relationship with the institution, that can get kind of interesting in all kinds of ways, whether you're here or not. But it's with the teammates. And what I'm saying is when you leave your teammates, we no longer have a relationship. We can we can hit each other up on IG. We can IG live with each other. But unless we're in the locker room every single day with each other, the relationship's just not the same. That's not how things work. And they think they can just gather up all these relationships from different places and put them. And that's just, uh, unfortunately, and that's why I'm, it's sort of resigning to me is that they think it's going to work out one way, but that's not how things work. And, you, and like to your point, many of them are moving forward without actual having a base, baseline group of friends, baseline group of um, uh, people that they can rely on. And so, yes, you have to make a, you have to make a decision, whatever it, you consider best for your family. I don't even know what that means. That's kind of a phrase that's been run into the ground. But it's uh, they're becoming professionals before they have to. Yeah. And, and when you when you become a professional, I just don't know if you want to rush into that. 803-404-6100. We'll come back. Uh, we will wrap up our number one. Uh, Preston, why retaining Lamont Paris was especially important. We'll let you get into that a little bit. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, she's Jen Jensen. It is the early game.
803-404-6100 is how you can uh, weigh in this morning if you want to so choose to do so. Let's get out to the Love Chevy phone lines. Rocky wants to weigh in. Rocky, how you doing this morning? What's on your mind? Uh, good morning, fellas. Uh, yeah, doing okay. Hope you guys are. Um, yeah, I want to weigh in on Michi <clears throat> a little bit. And uh, Preston, you said you took notes, and the first thing, it, it didn't seem like a – a decision he was very happy with or someone making the decision to move on, you know, normally you would be happy. The one comment he made that stuck out to me is he says, I'm a long way from home. And whether it's a, and he's talking about best for him and his family and if it's a situation where maybe he they want him to get back closer to home, he wants to get back closer to home, is it homesickness? I don't see, you know, after two years and good success, I don't know, but or his personal situation, nor to any of us. But that's what stuck out to me. You know, man, I just got to get back closer to home for some reason, even though I really might not want to. You know what I'm saying? I Thank you for the phone call, Rocky. I just told yeah. Preston that off air. We were talking about it. I His, his father is a high school basketball coach. Um, I believe his, his name is Dwayne Johnson, now that I think about this uh, out loud. But good name <laughs> um i will i will confirm that in just a minute but I, I do wonder i do wonder if that does indeed play a role or if his if his dad is is indeed the high school coach this allows his dad to be able to coach high school games and i'll i'll have this looked up completely i'm 99 percent sure his dad was the high school coach but um it allows him to coach on friday night and be able to see his son in home game scenarios on saturday which I get. I don't guess, but that that you go. Oh, okay. That makes a yeah, lot you, more you, sense. Yeah, you could never. Argue, you couldn't argue with if if and that's. I think there's a big caveat. If he's going, which it seems likely to be moving towards going towards Ohio State, going back closer to home. That's a tough conversation to pass on, right? That's a tough idea of not being able to get your family and friends. That's a. That's an intriguing scenario. So that just something, something else. Now, one thing you pointed out. Yeah, or that you wanted to point out was now how important it was to keep Lamont Paris well, I to, think, to wrap I, him up. I think that's why that why getting that deal done when we got it done was so important because now you have a stabilizing piece here for this conversation. He can say, look what I've done. He can go into the portal with this reputation, with this great season, and be able to sell the program and the vision to the next wave of people because we've seen these other teams move on. Dusty May... Uh, we see the coach from James Madison move on. Mark Byington, which Mark I think Byington. is a great hire by yeah, Vanderbilt. Absolutely. I really think that's a huge absolutely hire. Absolutely great hire. But we know these hirings were happening. And so the Sharks were circling, I believe, around Lamont. And so it was very imperative. So kudos to the admin for getting it done when they did because now you have a stabilizing force in the in the room. That can help as we start moving towards this new cycle of recruiting as far as going in the portal. 803-404-6100. Let's get back out to the Love Chevy phone lines. Steve wants to weigh in on the transfer portal. Steve, what's on your mind? How you doing this morning? Good morning, guys. How you doing? What's up, Good. man? Okay. Um, this is my opinion. Uh, when the player, to me, decided to make a transfer, it had to have been a thought in their mind. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out if when, they, when they're putting it in the mind they're going to transfer, but I'm going to finish this season, are they putting 100% in? Because, if, you know, it's just like if you leave another job, moving to another job, then you're kind of like cleaning up what you got to do for you before you move on. I mean, it just to me, I don't, I don't know if they're putting it all into it, but I'm leaving next year anyway. So, you know, I mean, it just seems like that I play a transfer and it's only – Half of mine is in the game, and the other half is on where you going to go play ball at or where you going to go play, or whatever the case may be. I just wonder, and I know y'all don't know either, but can it be 100% into their team with the thought knowing they're not going to be back next year? Man, this, this, I just wonder about that. Yeah, to answer your question, that I think you're 100% on to something, and the answer is no. And I wonder if they ever can commit 100% to anything when there's always a back door to slide out of or and always the transfer portal to get into. Part of the commitment, part of, part of the idea of the commitment is that we're going to have to make this thing work regardless of whether it's going my way or not. And when there's always the option to you for you to get out, 
it might be more difficult for you to commit 100 percent. So I do think I do think you're onto something. Not saying that they're not committed as the games are playing, or not that they don't want to win, but there's a lot of in between time between when you're in the court and and you're not actually playing. And I wonder what if you're always looking around trying to assess your options. Can you ever fully commit? So I wonder if there is something to that. I think I think that is a fair statement to me. And obviously, I think all of us coming from an adult perspective, you know that. Like you said, that was a great point, Steve. When you get ready to leave a job, two weeks, you know, you're starting to pack a little bit of stuff, cleaning up your office, taking a little stuff here. They're having meetings around, and you're like, it's my favorite meme, and it's the Magic Johnson meme where he's like, they ask him what's about to happen. He's like, I don't know. I'm not going to be there. <laughs> I think... I think there is something fair to that. And if you always have that one foot sort of option out, I wonder if how difficult it is to commit. Sonny Johnson, not Dwayne Johnson. A little bit <laughs> of a say, let. Poor guy Dwayne Johnson. He'll never find his name on Google. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, a little bit of a letdown to find that out. But Sonny Johnson, uh, Michi's father, is the head coach at Garfield Heights. Uh, that was what I was looking for. We'll continue this. We'll also get back into Lenora Sellers. Oh, boy. He's here He's, for now. I'm ready to hype him. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Bill Gunner for the mortgage guru, Jacob Crowder with First Palmetto Bank. If you've been thinking about building a new home lately, guess what? First Palmetto Bank has a no-nonsense construction loan that will probably fit your needs. But you don't know until you make a phone call to the mortgage guru today. That's Jacob Crowder. And you can make that phone call, 803-719-1005. Jacob helped me just a few years ago. I can speak to his professionalism and how well he gets the job done. And now with First Palmetto Bank being locally owned and operated, Jacob has local decision makers, which means quick and precise underwriting. So call the mortgage guru today if you're thinking about moving you need a good interest rate you're thinking about building you want a no-nonsense construction loan jacob crowder is the person to call again that's 803-719-1005 or you can email him the letter j crowder at firstpalmetto.com he's the mortgage guru jacob crowder with first palmetto bank And for your morning commute, we don't see a lot of slowdowns right now, and uh, we'll, we'll hope to keep it that way. 321 and I-20 is the only accident out there that's being reported. 
And uh, maybe a late stray shower. We'll get into the timing of that here in a little bit. 70 will be our high today. 72 tomorrow with some thunderstorms possible. And the showers wrapping up on uh, Thursday morning with a high of 66. But uh, right now, it's cloudy and 54 on the early game. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. J.C. Sherbert set to join us this morning. A couple of y'all weighing in on the text message line. Anonymous texter saying Michi Johnson just gave us the "It's not you, it's me" speech. <laughs> Quite familiar with that speech, aren't you? <laughs> you know, I just don't. You know, you, you've been wonderful. It's been great. I've really enjoyed our time together. <laughs> it's me. It's not you. It's, it's all all my issues. Joey from Sumter said since he's already transferred once, doesn't he have to sit out? No, no, that that's been done away with. And also, I think he's a graduate. I think. Yeah, I don't. That's really interesting. That's a whole nother conversation. But the NCAA has essentially thrown their hands up and said, "We're not dealing with this anymore." Yeah. Cookie cakes, all recruiting visits. Now that we can prosecute, <laughs> but this transfer yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah y'all figure it yeah. out by your do own. Do not decorate the hotel room. You want to do recruit? an extra photo shoot? We're on it. <laughs> transfer portal. Ah. Right. We, we got no answer. No answer. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. That's how you can weigh in if you so want to choose to do so this morning. Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, Jen Jensen, and joined now by J C Sherbert of the Big Spur.com. And, J.C., a lot to get to. It was uh, an incredible weekend for South Carolina Athletics all the way around yesterday. Maybe put a little bit of a damper on it because, uh, you know, looking ahead to the future, that's really where you go with this. Looking ahead, now you do have to replace three starters. But l let's start with this because I think a lot of people are going to ask. The NIL situation and how it reflects on men's basketball because I, that's that's kind of what – the transfer portal is to some some extent. It is free agency. And how do you view the NIL situation for men's basketball? Uh, you know, I, obviously, there, you know, at Garnet Trust, we're going to try to raise more funds just like everybody else this time of year. I mean, you can never have enough. Um, I'll say this, you know, Michi Johnson uh, was not going to starve the NIL last had he returned to South Carolina, uh, he was never um, – there was never even a discussion. You know, he didn't really even want to talk about it. So, uh, at least not uh, before he made his announcement to go on the portal. So, you know, it, it, you'd think, you know, NIL right away or that, you know, uh, I heard thoughts of speculation that was inaccurate yesterday that oh, South Carolina wouldn't match or whatever. Well, well there, was no, there was no discussion. On South Carolina, uh, you know, it hadn't even, you know, gotten to a, a talk yet, you know, with uh, the collective. So, uh, and it was, you know, in my opinion, uh, you know, like I said, uh, without getting into specifics, he wasn't going to starve next season had he returned. So, uh, and I don't know, you know, Ohio State's been very aggressive uh, in football, uh, their collective this off season with NIL and hiring coaches and whatever else. I, I kind of took it as they're mad about Michigan winning the national championship, and that kind of got them off their butts. But, um, you know, judging from some reaction on social media from their collective yesterday when Michi announced or the news broke he was going into the portal, uh, you know, maybe they have uh, some ideas for him to come back home. Uh, and, 
you know, uh, I think when you're from a certain spot and, you know, you think you can maybe go back and the situation's different and, you know, uh, I know he knows LeBron James. Maybe LeBron James said something. I don't know. I don't want to vilify LeBron here and get into all that. But, uh, you know, maybe that's that's a tough decision to, to stay uh, at that point. But, um, you know, I, I, I do want to make it clear, this is not a situation where South Carolina – just got outbid and, and refused to pay whatever the, the, the narrative could be. I mean, it, it wasn't a situation like that. It was just he wanted to go in the portal, and he went. So that's it's America. It's a free country. The rules state that he can. The rules state uh, a lot of things. The law states a lot of things now. So um, you just have to live with it and move forward. Preston, uh, the JC, I, after kind of talking this through, sometimes this is how Sports Talk Radio works. You, you come in, I've talked with Preston, we've kind of gone through this, we've replayed the audio. I start to think this is more and more about going home so Dad can see him play without the travel. If Dad is the head coach at Garfield, well, he's not. it's not a matter of if. The Dad is the head coach. Sonny Johnson is the coach at Garfield Heights. This is the easiest thing for family to be able to not have to coach a game on Friday night fly on Saturday because I think they were talking late in the season when the high school season ended for Garfield Heights. It was one of the few times that his dad had been able to see him actually play. We'll continue to monitor that. The bigger picture well, and, and he and, mentioned it he mentioned it with Pittsburgh too. He mentioned it before Pittsburgh too that that's the first time a lot of his family. Because Pittsburgh's not a far drive from, from there. So Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the, yeah, you, you're probably on to something there. Would be my opinion. I, I think there's a little more family oriented to me personally as we've talked this out this morning than uh, than nil. But now now the big picture here, and Preston, I'll start with you is how you replace him because I, I don't think it's just as simple as oh well we'll just go to the transfer portal and find another guy. I know that there's going to be a lot of them out there, but you now have to you're still fighting with the Mark Byingtons who are now at Vanderbilt. Uh, you got to you got to fight with the Dusty Mays who are going to be at Michigan. You got to fight with the coach who's now at Ohio State. I mean, it's not as simple. The question is is how attractive is South Carolina based on what they did this year? Yeah, I think I think they're in a in a good position to be able to attract people to the position with Lamont as the head coach. With at the end of the video, which Michi did say, I don't know whether it rings or not, but he did give it was a tepid endorsement. It wasn't like he he could have made a little more full throated, but he did say that Lamont developed him as a player. He did say that if you did come to USC, you'd be making a, a solid decision. So you can go based on that and saying that this is a place where people get developed and they can go on and move forward. So I do think they're they're ne- not negotiating, but they are uh, recruiting from a power position. JC, I mean, again, do you look at this and, and now we start to look at the transfer portal exploding? And that to me is there's going to, again, a lot of great, there's going to be options. It's This isn't like Michi's the only player who shot the way he did and averaged 14 points. What I say, and I'm interested in your opinion, is what you're really losing here is a guy who understands Lamont Paris's system and was going to be a team leader after two years in the program. Oh, yeah. He showed a lot of leadership this year. I mean, compare him to the last season. Um, you know, he, he was very unselfish. Uh, and a lot of times guys with his skill set, they tend to, you know, they get aggressive and, you know, they're not – shot selection becomes an issue and all that. And it was not that way with Michi this year. He had some games where he didn't score, but he affected the game with the way he passed. Uh, shoot, I'm the Talon Cooper's late three at Tennessee. That was a driving dish by Michi. Um, and so that's the key, I think. You know, is it hard to find guys that can do what Michi Johnson does? Uh, no, in a way, uh, there are a lot of guys with his skill set. That's true, but are you, but you got to find a guy that wants to come play in the system. Uh, you got to find a guy that uh, has the mind, the team mindset. Um, then when we interviewed Lamont Paris on Inside the Game Couch, the show a couple of weeks ago, he talked about having high basketball character, and that's what he's talking about. You know, unselfishness. I mean, South Carolina was one of the most unselfish teams in the country this past season um that was the key to their success that's how they overcame some talent deficiencies and things like that so you know that's got to continue for this program to continue to win and i'm sure that based on his track record lamont paris is going to target you know similar like-minded players to come in and run the system next year so uh yeah it, it's unfortunate i mean don't get me wrong i, I love michi johnson's game he's an exciting player 
boy, he fills it up from 35 feet sometimes, uh, is fearless uh, and was a leader. So that it, it does hurt. Uh, but whatever personal reasons he has for departing and going elsewhere, and we'll find all that out soon, uh, you just wish him the best of luck and move on. It's the, it's the world we're in now. Um, and so now the question becomes, yeah, how do you replace him? And there are probably a lot of good options out there. Um, uh, despite Mark Binnington being at Vanderbilt, Bill, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know that that's a big, uh, a big deal. But um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, I love Binnington at, at Vanderbilt. I think that's a, a great hire. Uh, now, granted, again, I'm a little biased because I've known Mark uh, from my days with 24/7 Sports when he was down at Charleston as an assistant. Yeah. Um, and and I think the world of him and and what he did at, at James Madison. I think he's going to be a great fit at Vanderbilt. But he's a uh, winner, yeah. W- one other thing that about this that again might be easier to replace, but Preston and I have talked a lot about the athleticism of this basketball, uh, of that basketball team. And Michi was the one guy you saw it in blowouts, uh, Oregon and Auburn come to mind, who could go and get his shot. That is something that has to be rectified in the portal. You had to get more guys around him like that. Uh, now you lose the one guy who was really capable of going off the dribble from the top of the key and getting his shot. It might have been a 35-foot shot, but it also opened the door to him getting in the lane, and he was able to do that at times against Auburn. Uh, he tried to do it against Alabama in that blowout, and they kind of shut him down. But he was able to do it against Auburn. He was able to do it there and, and kind of keep Preston, kind of keep South Carolina in the game against Oregon. Yeah, he was the, he was the one guy who was able to create – for his own shot. We talk about athleticism. He was probably the best athlete on the team, I think, closely followed by Zach and then maybe CMB, just as far as athleticism was concerned. And they're probably going to have to find another guy that can go and get his own shot when the system breaks down. You know, Michi was my my favorite, one of my favorite types of basketball players. The no, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Good shot, good shot. Uh, and I, I don't know. I don't know what the what the, the analytics are on that, but there is something to a guy who can go make his own plays. Yeah. Exactly, uh, you know, and, and there are guys like that out there. I mean, and, and here, here you go. What, what, if, what if his replacement is six five, six six, and can guard the perimeter and can hit threes and it can create his own shot and all that? Then all of a sudden you've got the uh, valuable link on the perimeter defensively. Uh, you know, maybe you upgrade on it. I don't know. Um, I think that uh, there's all kinds of options out there when you're talking about a two guard. Um, and so uh, we'll see what happens. But you're right, you know, when you kind of look at the needs, uh, that athleticism, ability to create your own shot, all that good stuff, that's uh, that's important. And Michi was important in that role. And so obviously when you lose something, it has to be replaced. And, uh, and, and you know, quite frankly, I think they probably will. I don't know who, but uh, I think they've got some, um, they got some ability to go out and, and get some guys. Well, we will talk about something far more positive. Lenora Sellers. I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting closer, JC and Preston. To, all right, I'll go back into my hype mode for Lenora Sellers. I'm trying not. I'm trying not. But, but we'll play some audio. And we'll discuss the new Gamecock quarterback, the young man who is set to probably take the reins. We'll discuss that. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, JC Sherbert joining us from the BigSpur.com as he does on Tuesdays. It is the early game.
Bill Gunner for AAA Heating and Air. We're at that part of the year where you don't know what to do. Cut the heat on, cut the air conditioner on, start giving that heating and air unit a workout. But guess what? AAA Heating and Air has got you taken care of. If your heating and air unit is running a little poorly right now, maybe it's about time to make a change. Number one, they have a free replacement estimate, free replacement estimate that they can give you to get an idea of the cost. Number two, they have an incredible deal going on right now. How about this? No payment and no interest until 2025. You can get new comfort in your home as soon as tomorrow with a phone call today. That number to do so, 803-677-1500. You can visit them on the web, callaaatoday.com. And how about this? AAA Heating and Air is now providing professional and residential electrical services, including electrical panel upgrades, lighting installation, and repair, along with new generator installations. Call AAA Heating and Air today. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. And as far as your traffic conditions go out there this morning, a couple things to make you aware of. Uh, Buckner Road at Fairfield Road. Also, Emanuel Church Road near Old Barnwell Road. There is an accident reported. And also, a disabled vehicle, I-26 eastbound at exit 111. That would be Highway 1. And we're looking for a high today of about... 70 degrees, 72 tomorrow with some thunderstorms possible, 66 on Thursday with maybe some morning showers. We could get some rain later tonight, some very slim chances after like 7 o'clock. So it looks like so far baseball should be okay. Right now, though, 54 on the early game.
just that like anything can happen like I can go out there and just like completely just like not do what I'm expected to do and just like you know what I'm saying? You can lose a spot or anything, not really lose a spot because nothing is, is set in stone yet. But it's like you just have to just try to get better every single day. So that's what I'm going into thinking. Lenore Sellers yesterday talking uh, to the media. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But let me remind you, coming up on April the 5th over at Charwood, that is next Friday, it is our 107.5 The Game Golf Tournament. Spring Golf Tournament, $400 for a foursome. We will have a blast. Onion sausage early in the morning. What a great way to start your day with a little onion sausage for breakfast from Old Timey Meat Market. We'll have a mimosa bar by Saki's Wine and Spirits. Then we'll have lunch provided by Firehouse Subs. Has some incredible giveaways. Baseball tickets to South Carolina. Carowinds tickets. Concert tickets. Craft beer passport. Get registered today. 803-755-2000. Again, that's 803-755-2000. $400 for a foursome. You're going to want to take get uh, your team registered. Spots are filling up. So call out to Charwood today. 803-755-2000. And register for the 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament. Tournament. That is next Friday, April the 5th. Uh, JC, I, I think last week I I, I I tried to caution the hype of Lenora Sellers. I'm trying. I'm trying to, to maintain a level head on this. But I listening to him speak and, and from my time doing interviews, body language and how you conduct yourself with the media – sometimes gives me more hope than it should, and I was very impressed, Preston. JC, Bill has a cold heart. We're trying to thaw his little heart out. We're trying to make sure his heart <laughs> – he's the hes the Grinch of spring practice, and we're trying to make sure his little Grinch heart grows a couple of sizes. I think Norris is doing it. I mean, Norris is an impressive young man. I mean, you know, he has a 4.57 GPA. SAT was through the roof. He's an excellent student. That's not the end all be all of everything. I mean, I think you can be a very intelligent person and have high character and not have good grades. Uh, you know, I think I'm a living example of that. But uh, it's, uh, you know, but, but there's that. Um, I've heard he's really good at reading defenses. I've heard he's really good at learning the playbook. Um, all those things you sort of are concerned about with a new quarterback. You know, they're, they're not big, bad concerns. Um, uh, the concern is just he had no, not a lot of experience, you know, and, and experience matters no matter how talented you are. So uh, I think they're in good hands. Um, you know, I, I think they probably, you know, have some needs at receiver still that they need to go fill. Uh, I like what I've heard from about Gage Larvidane. Um But I think they – they're going to target some guys in the portal the next period. And, you know, if, if they get really lucky, I think uh, they, they'd like to have a left tackle, but that's hard to find at <laughs> the transfer portal. Um, you know, the rest of the offensive line is shaping up pretty well. And, you know, if they don't get a new uh, a left tackle, I think probably they're just probably going to go young there. I mean, young doesn't always mean bad. Uh, most of the time it means iffy, but it's not bad because uh, they got a special one in Josiah Thompson. But, um, yeah, he's a freshman. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I think the run game has a chance to really improve. And then, you know, you look at all the players on defense, there's really no excuse for them not to take a big step this year. So, you know, yeah, right now things look good. And everybody's healthy. You know, that, that's a big key, obviously. But but as far as sellers, I mean that that's really like one of my least concerns. That uh, and you're going to see these quarterback rankings and all this garbage in the off season. And they'll be ranked 13th or 14th in the league, and then by about week four, everybody will be talking about him most likely. So you know, I, I wouldn't get discouraged by any preseason predictions when it comes to Gamecock football this year. Just uh, hope everybody stays healthy. Hope they make some acquisitions in the portal. Hope everybody gets better this off season, which is what the off season's for. And you know, let's go Old Dominion and Kentucky. You know, look at those two games. Look forward to those. Okay, maybe maybe I'm moving Mike Simon back to the Kentucky game when he's got to go on the road to Kentucky and and showcase what he can do. I, I go back to what this offense will look like, and there's a lot of different small components, JC and Preston, that you go okay. 
this offense will look different. And here's just a few. Number one, the running back room is is different than it was a year ago for Spencer Rattler. Number two, the running back coach is different than it was last year. And number three, and maybe more importantly, Sean Elliott is now on staff to offer his kind of guidance into the running game as well as work with Lonnie Teasley. Preston, I'll start with you. How much can a running back coach impact the run game? Because I think a lot of us, isn't it just, hey, son, don't fumble, and if somebody's running at the quarterback, block them so that the quarterback doesn't get taken out. Ooh, that's a really good question. I don't know what type of input he'll have on, on the staff. Traditionally, the running back coach does not impact the run game very much. It's more going to so going to be the offensive line coach who's going to be the biggest hand and then the o- offense coordinator. However, if this particular running back coach has previous experience, they may be able to implement or be able to suggest things that he feels fits his running back a little bit more. So that's why I'm very intrigued about how this staff is going to work together because there are a lot of a lot of pieces that could potentially fit well or they may not work. I don't know. And and JC, a guy that I know you mentioned on the BigSpur.com that some positive feedback has come through is a guy that we hadn't really talked about. We talked about Rocket Sanders. We talked about Jerron Howe. But Oscar Attaway to third is a guy that you've heard some positive things about so far in, uh, in the, at the yeah. beginning of spring practice. Yeah, he just keeps coming up, you know. I mean, obviously – uh, you get kind of a steal, a transfer from SC State. You look at Owl's film, and it's like, wow. You know, and I, and I made the comparison to Derek Watson. Certainly stand by that. I think he's going to be really good. Rocket Sanders could be an All-American type if he returns to form from 2022. Uh, you know, but Attaway kind of was a guy they liked from the start. He's from North Little Rock High School. Uh, Dowell Loggins is kind of familiar with his coaching staff. and He had a long career at North Texas, man. He's carried the ball a lot. And uh, it was really good. Uh, kind of split time with a smaller five foot seven ish back last year for the Mean Green. But you know, kind of reminds me a little bit of Brandon Wilds with uh, his size and the way he runs. Uh, and he keeps coming up in my conversations. I don't necessarily ask about him, so I felt like I should mention him on the Big Spur, and and that's good. Uh, at that position, man, those guys get banged up so much. You could never have too many. I mean, we all remember t- speaking of Wilds. We remember 2011, Wilds was the fifth team running back. Uh, Everybody gets hurt, including Marcus Lattimore, so it's up to Brandon. You know, Brandon, I remember going up Tennessee, and he runs for 109 yards against the balls and Gamecocks win. So, you know, you need depth in this league at that spot. Carolina had none last year. And so uh, having having the restocking of that room has been very, very positive. And, you know, you still have Juju McDowell and Dontavious Braswell there as well. So that's – that's going to be a positive for the team. And you mentioned Sean Elliott. You know, he has a lot of little nuances in the run game that he likes to add. And my understanding is he's in the process of adding them. Uh, so, you know, he's got a track record. Georgia State, teams rarely stop that stuff that he runs. So, uh, you got to feel good about that scheme uh, being married to Dowell Loggins in the passing game and all that. So, I think, I think they're going to work well together uh, moving forward. Yeah, I was just saying, I, uh... <laughs> it's building over here. All right, I'm trying to maintain. I was just saying, you know, I, I coached Brandon in high school, and this is what I will say for Brandon. He might have been fifth on the depth chart, but that was only in the coach's mind, <laughs> not in his mind. You know, when, when, Brandon was, when Brandon was getting recruited, they was like, you know Marcus Latimer was going there, right? And he was like, yeah. So Brandon was full of confidence. <laughs> yeah. So if, if Oscar has that same type of confidence, you need those guys in the room to feel as if when they get the shot, they're going to perform, and yeah. Brandon always felt like that. And, and that's look, and JC, you know, we've we've covered recruiting. The kids that go to Georgia and succeed, that's how they feel. They don't look and go, "Oh man, there's three five stars in front of me." I, th- they got to deal with me. I'm coming. And we'll continue talking about that. Also, JC, we'll get an update from you on the running back coach. A lot of rumors over the weekend that he might have been on the way out the door. That looks like it's settled down now as we sit here on Tuesday morning. But we'll get an update with that. Talk a little baseball as well. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner. She's Jen Jensen. It is the early game.
We are wrapping up the month of March, but you've still got time to take advantage of Zeris Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning's Spring Cleaning Sale. Just call them today and mention me, Bill Gunner, at 107.5 The Game, and you'll get three rooms of carpet cleaned for $129 plus a free hallway. That phone number, 803-262-4020, or you can book online, ZerusColumbia.com. Take advantage of the spring sale. You've got just a few more days here with the month of March. March. Again, all you got to do is call 803-262-4020 and mention me, Bill Gunner, at 107.5 The Game, and you'll get three rooms of carpet cleaned for $129, plus you can get a free hallway. Again, you can always book online, ZeroSColumbia.com with their patented ZR Water Technology. Zeroes Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning will leave that house looking sparkling. 803-262-4020. That's how you can call Zeroes. Spell it backwards and forwards. It's the right way to clean. Buckner Road at Fairfield Road. We do have a report of an accident there. I-26 eastbound between exits 97 and 101. The left lane is blocked. So common area for issues. Sadly, it is again today. The left lane blocked. I-26 eastbound between exits 97 and 101. Emanuel Church Road at Old Barnwell Road. We have an accident there. Also Highway 302 at Highway 6. I-26 eastbound at Columbia Avenue, and uh, aside from that, all else is moving along 
fairly well this morning. 70 for the high today, a lay, late stray shower. 72 with some thunder tomorrow, maybe some morning showers on Thursday and 66. But right now, it's 56 on the early game. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. As we roll along, joined as we are each and every Tuesday by J C Sherbert, and we'll get back to him in just a second. But you heard Jen mention a little bit of rain coming up. Well, I hope your roof is ready for that. If not, it's time to call Mid State Roofing and their twenty four hour a day, seven day a week call center. Eight zero three three five six nineteen nineteen. You either speak with an on call technician or a Mid State Roofing employee, and they will help get you into a maintenance contract. We got some rain coming up is your roof ready have you done some leak detection if not it's time to call mid-state roof and they've been the leader in the roofing industry for nearly 30 years in the roofing and waterproofing industry and their proven history is your assurance that their professionals will provide the proper advice service and results to the needs of your facility so call mid-state roofing today 803-356-1919 you can get more information online midstateroofing.com again if you've got a leak, let Mid-State Roofing take a peek. So we talked about Michi Johnson. We've talked about the transfer portal, and that's why I think, guys, real quick, I want to come back to this and get Preston's opinion and J.C.'s opinion. Guys like Luke Doty, the carry-on joiner, should be honored a little bit more. Luke Doty, obviously, uh, the things he could do, he's practicing both at wide receiver and at quarterback. But yesterday, he talked about, with his media session, on why he has stayed at the University of South Carolina. Here's Luke Doty. 13. Uh, yeah, I mean, my parents told me whenever I was being recruited, um, and it's something I, I still think about today, is uh, if, if you took football out of it, would you still want to be at the university? Would you still want to go to school here? Would you still want to, you know, ha have a life here? Um, and the answer for me at South Carolina was always yes. Um, and, it, and it still is right now, and, and it always will be. Um, so when, you know, the, the questions about transferring come up, um, you know, it's, it's easy for me because I, I love this place. I love the city. I love the people. I love the fans as crazy as they are. Um, the environment, e everything about it here, um, I, I love it, and I, I wouldn't change anything for the world. Former player who understands a lot of that very well, Preston Thorne, what is your take on when you hear something like that? Yeah, I think that's a very strong perspective for any 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 body to have when you're choosing to make a decision, especially as you go into college. Um, do you enjoy being at that place? And so that that's a very firm decision. I also state everything I heard from Luke was saying that this is the best decision for him. He feels that this is the best place for him. So he is making as much as a quote unquote selfish decision as somebody who leaves. I would encourage anybody to make the decision that you feel is best for you. Luke is making the best decision for him. The other people who have this, who have decided to leave, they're making what they think is the best decision for him. I would side on the side of Luke in establishing roots, being home in a place that's things that I value, um, but it's still what is best for him in that specific situation. And, and JC, to you, how do we how does Luke Doty get utilized this year because we haven't I don't feel like when we talked about some of these wide receivers his name gets brought up all that much and as we talk about quarterbacks it seems to be more about Lenora Sellers and Robbie Ashford than Luke Doty what is his role in your opinion because he is a good athlete he's a guy who can contribute I'm just I'm interested to hear your opinion on how and where uh, I think that uh, I think he's got a shot at receiver you think about you know, last year he had some games where he wasn't all that productive, um, but he had some games where he was. And when, when he caught the ball, he looked like he belonged, um, starting with the North Carolina game. Um, everybody will always forever remember that run against Clemson. They probably would have remembered it better if Carolina won the football game, but uh, that was something, you know. 
Uh, he's a good athlete, and he's got good hands. And I think last year, everybody's got to keep in mind, although Luke has been in the program for a while, you know, he hasn't been fully healthy, and he hasn't uh, – he hasn't played that position a lot since high school. And so uh, I think Mike Fury could work with him and, and get him to be a guy that could catch, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 balls uh, this coming season. You know, the Gamecocks need players to step up at that spot. Who better than Luke Doty to do it? And he's got the skill set. I think his hands are good. Um, you know, I think that last year was a learning experience for him at that position. But, uh you know, everybody's got to keep in mind around here, players get better, you know, and, and I think that you know, one of the, the easy things to do is just write somebody off if they struggle. Uh, well, a lot of guys struggle early, you know, <laughs> and you don't want to write them off because they end up being really good. Xavier Leggett's a perfect example of that. So, you know, but I, I think a good year for Luke would be, you know, like I said, produce, catch 15 to 30 balls or whatever and, uh, and be a regular part of that rotation. I certainly think he's capable of doing it and you know, I think he's also capable of being one of the leaders of this football team. So that's uh, that's always a positive thing. And his remarks there, you know, sort of what it's all about in today's kind of me, me, me world. Uh, it's refreshing to kind of see a guy that just loves being in a place and uh, – He's happy and content doing that. With with Luke Doty, it is it is going to be very interesting. You think about his career path, and he starts those games uh, in Shane Beamer's first year, maybe never healthy with the foot. Uh, Spencer Rattler comes in, and, and you go, okay, well, this would allow Luke the opportunity to kind of develop as a quarterback. Because, guys, I want to go back to, to Lenora Sellers. And one thing about Lenora Sellers is – it's one of the few times I can remember South Carolina allowing a a freshman quarterback to develop over the last almost 10 years. You go back to 2015, and it was Lorenzo Nunez who got thrown into the mix right away by Steve Spurrier because there wasn't a quarterback. Then it was Brandon McElwain in 2016, followed quickly by Jake Bentley. Then it was Ryan Holinsky who was thrown in as a true freshman, and Luke Doty then thrown in as a true freshman in 2020. This is one of the few times I can remember a true freshman that it was hyped and nothing against Colton got the year, but a true freshman that was hyped that they have actually been able to allow to develop before starting. Your thoughts on that, Preston, having yeah. watched some quarterbacks in your time? Uh, you just took us down memory lane of the times where, see, there's the big difference between what we were trying to do with some of those other names that you mentioned. We were trying to talk ourselves into it, trying to figure out, oh, well, you know, if we get a couple things going, we might be able to, blah, blah. That's not the case with Lenoris. Lenoris is legit, and this might be Spencer's biggest impact on the program was allowing Lenoris to play behind him, work behind him, see what a pro looks like, and being able to uh, kind of take on that mentorship from from an older guy who's experienced in all the highs and lows of, of college football. So what a great time for Lenoris to be in that program. J.C.? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he had, I think you'd, you'd have to go back to Dylan Tom, Connor Shaw. Oh, my God. Uh, Connor was kind of thrown in the fire uh, early. I mean, he was the backup as a true freshman and, and played some. And then Garcia actually redshirted his first year and then started playing a little bit his next year as a redshirt freshman and then kind of took over as a starter in year three. So, yeah, and you got to go back to the, those days to see – quarterback sort of come in and, and develop and you know I, I think that uh, I call it the Tanny Hill syndrome uh, you know we like to throw them in to the fire around here <laughs> you know and and look sometimes it works Jake Bentley I mean saved the season in 2016 you know Ryan Haliski sort of went the different a different way um, uh, you know Lorenzo Nunez certainly uh, played a, a nice role down the stretch after Spurrier resigned but was never going to be that guy, you know. Um, you can go all the way back to '99 and Mikael Goodman. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's not always been <laughs> ideal, you know. And and look, look, I think had Luke Doty not been hurt, or if they'd have had a different offensive coordinator, we may be singing a different tune about him. And, I, and I'll say this: let's say catastrophe strikes and something happens to Lenore Sellers and Robbie Ashford both, and they both can't go. You know, I, th I think you'd see them instead of going with Reno or or uh, the kid from Oklahoma, uh, that, Davis Bevel. I, I think they'd probably bring Luke back just because of the quarterback run game and sort of what they're trying to do on offense this year. Uh, Davis Bevel is a guy you'd have to kind of restructure things with 
Um, but uh, Luke could certainly step in there, take some snaps, run the football, do his thing, scramble around, and give you a shot. So I, I think that's probably why he is taking some reps at QB, but most of it is at wide receiver this spring. 803-404-6100. We come back. We will wrap the hour up with J.C. Sherbert. Final thoughts on the NCAA basketball tournament as a whole and a little baseball discussion. It is the early game. Bill Gunner for AAA Heating and Air. I tell you what, this is the time of year where the weather is always changing on us and you need to be ready. And if that heating and air unit has been struggling a little bit, well, guess what? AAA Heating and Air is ready to take care of you. And it starts with a free replacement estimate. That's right. They set the tone for quality and affordability. Let their expert team ensure your home is always an oasis of comfort and call them today. Get that free replacement estimate, 803-677. 1500. And how about this? They have a 15 year parts and labor warranty, and that speaks volumes to their trust in their service and products. They're in it for the long haul. They're not just going to put in a brand new unit and then run away from you. Call AAA Heating and Air to learn more today. 803 677 1500. Again, that's 803 677 1500. That's AAA Heating and Air, where quality meets commitment, and your comfort is their legacy. Seven forty-eight as we wrap up our number two. J.C. Sherbert joining us as he does each and every week. Bill Gunner, Preston Thorne, Jen Jensen as we uh, get you through the morning here. And one of the things we've not talked about is the big picture view of the NCAA tournament. Yet yesterday, kind of a breather, unless you got into the women's tournament heavily. But uh, today, you get a little bit of a breather. Tomorrow, a little bit of a breather. Then we're back into action on Thursday. So, J.C., we have to ask, how is the bracket holding up? Where do you stand with your NCAA tournament bracket? How many Final Four teams do you have left? 
I've got uh, I've got the whole Final Four left. I didn't buy the Kentucky or Auburn hype. Uh, I think I have Creighton, uh, and that that was in my non South Carolina bracket. Of course, I had a, I had a bracket with South Carolina going to the Elite Eight, but then Creighton losing to Akron. But uh, my official bracket, I guess well, we call it the official one. Uh, I have Creighton going to the Final Four in North Carolina. Uh, I think, gosh, who else? Uh, Arizona uh, and uh, UConn, and so I think that uh, I think that matches up. So hopefully it does. Uh, and uh, I, I believe I had uh, UConn win it all, or North Carolina won it at all. So uh, I'm still alive. Uh, my wife, though, is currently fourth in the Chief Sports Network bracket challenge. And so if she wins, I don't know if the rules, since I own that company, <laughs> uh, are going to let her win the prize pack. And she's already given me a little crap about it. So, uh, and I don't know that she survived all of her teams this weekend. So I think, I think she has North Carolina winning the whole thing too. But uh, so we got to be careful. Oh no, no, she has UConn. So you know there'd have to be a repeat, which rarely happens, but could this year uh, for her to get the. Uh, get the prize but i'm sweating that fourth place right now after the first weekend i think that's uh that's amazing and i'll, I'll brag on her a little more uh where she, i was just asking her who to pick and she picked duquesne what? one of the few people that picked that upset she picked duquesne out of nowhere so uh uh hats off to her and uh certainly we'll be monitoring her bracket moving forward through the week uh, JC, I want to give you this chance to clarify yourself. You said you only had South Carolina going to the Elite Eight in your homer bracket. Did I hear that properly? I hope not. Yeah, I just thought, Whoa. like, who would, who, who would have taken them out? Whoa. It would have been, um, you know, oh, but, JC, I, I don't think you understand how homer brackets are supposed to work. Homer bracket takes sure you to the top. The whole thing. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, I just, it's like I, I trash Purdue every single year because they're all, they always win 31 games. Their mascot is terrifying. Uh, I think Sports Illustrated ranked Sports Illustrated ranked the worst mascots in the tournament. Uh, and of course, uh, San Diego State and Illinois don't have a mascot. But uh, so 66. The tiger from Clemson was dead last, <laughs> which and rightfully so. They thought about it because he's kind of a tweaker and his eyes look really weird, and they're they're sewed on. I mean, the tiger is. I mean, come on, man. Uh, and then Purdue Pete, who is the most terrifying mascot in the country. Uh, he was he was right next to the tiger, and they said Purdue Pete's like one of those like the last thing you see before you die. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> it's horrifying. So I, I trashed Purdue a lot, but I figured the game got out that far and played Purdue. That would be the one time Purdue has a breakthrough and gets to their first Final Four, uh, and it would have been in Detroit, so they'd had home court advantage and all that. So I kind of after my first few rounds stopped being a homer and analyzed it. So. Uh, I guess that's that's my fault. Okay, half, let, half Homer bracket. Gotta let yourself dream a little. Half gotta half Homer dream. bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do feel we are heading, and and this sounds this is this is just not an attractive national championship game. The more I've kind of looked at it, I feel like we're heading for a UConn Purdue national championship game, and I Yuck. just yeah, like UConn can be fun to watch, but there's nothing about that game that I'm like, huh. I'll stay up till nine fifteen and watch tip off. Also, I got my eye on Hurley. I don't know whether he's bordering the line of intense or whiny baby. I'm not sure where he's getting to, but I'm. I got my eye on that situation right there. JC, I'll ask. I'll ask you this real quick. We got about a minute left with you. Um, Kentucky, do you keep John Calipari? Because Kentucky seems to be under the impression that Danny Hurley would crawl from uh, Hartford, from Stores uh, to Lexington, Kentucky, to coach their, their beloved basketball program? I don't know. Do you leave UConn for Kentucky? I'm not sure. Um, the, the only thing, if I'm Danny Hurley, that would probably – I mean, if UConn keeps flirting with the Big 12 and then they want to go back to being in a national conference and all that, you know, the best move they made for men's basketball guys was going back to the Big East. I mean, they, look, look at their program. I mean, they were in the wilderness in the American – for years because of football and the, the minute they go by the big east you know all of a sudden they're winning again uh at a better high level so you know that would be the only thing that i you know because i connecticut's a heck of a job I mean, it's one of the powerhouses of the northeast and you know i, I just you know outside of money because I'm, I'm sure uconn can't pay him like kentucky can i couldn't 
I couldn't see a reason for him to do that. But I think Cal, based on the reports I read early this morning, I think, I think Cal's coming back. And, you know, obviously the, the results can't continue. And they're going to tweak things. I don't know how it's going to work out. But uh, I don't think Kentucky's going to make a move. JC, we appreciate it as uh, always. Uh, before we let you out, final thoughts here on this weekend's women's bracket as they go to the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. That that dominant performance over North Carolina was something else. Yeah, man, and then I think anytime you know you can beat North Carolina like that in any sport, it's pretty it's pretty happy day in Gamecock land, right? Um, they're playing at a high level. Uh, I would watch out for Indiana though. I mean, a few years back, I remember Indiana. Indiana surprised them in one of those uh, preseason tournaments. I think I think Angry ended up playing them again later and beating them. So uh, watch out for that matchup. That's going to be something else. The Notre Dame's much improved as well. So it won't be easy in Albany, but uh, you know nothing really is from here on out. So uh, hopefully they keep playing and uh, end up with one of the most dominant teams of all time when all is said and done. Man, we'll catch up with you next week. Take care. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Take Preston. See yes, you. sir. Hour three on the way. Plenty to get to. It's the early game.
Buckner Road at Fairfield Road. We're reporting an accident there. Also, Emanuel Church Road near Old Barnwell. Highway 302 at Highway 6. I-26 eastbound at exit 91. And then I-26 eastbound between exits 97 and 101. So kind of a mess as you start. I-26 eastbound at exit 91 all the way, really, until exit 101. Big slowdown there. I-26 eastbound at Augusta Highway. Just uh, there is a disabled vehicle. Might be slowing things down a little bit. And Kitty Wake near St. David's Church Road. 70 it will be our high today with a lace, late stray shower. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred is how you can uh, weigh in if you so want to choose to do so. We will mention uh, we're monitoring a little bit, but as we're trying to do our show, thoughts and prayers to what is going on up in Baltimore this morning. As the uh, Preston, I've been talking about it off air, basically to try and understand what's happened. But the Francis Scott Key Bridge has collapsed uh, up there. A a cargo ship ran into it around 128 this morning at 128 a.m. Uh, the video is horrific. Both Preston and I uh, were saying it's comparable to something like you would see in an action horror movie. So thoughts and prayers with everybody up there uh, as we roll along. No major updates for us to really pass on, but just something that certainly is a major tragedy at this point. Uh, again, a cargo ship striking the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge this morning up in Baltimore around 128 a.m. Uh, again, Preston, we won't spend too much time on this, but the the video you saw it, both of us saw it on, on Twitter. Um, I, I don't know if amazing is the right word to use. It's just like kindling. It, it's horrifying is, I yeah, guess, more of a... Yeah, how it just crumbles. Um, uh, at least now there's a search for at least seven people, and sonar has detected some vehicles uh, uh, submerged in the in the river. Uh, you probably want to tune over to CNN or another news station this morning to continue to uh, follow this uh, developing story from uh, much early on. But do, do want to just say thoughts and prayers up there with those uh, that are dealing with this right now as is a crazy situation taking place. 803-404-6100 locally. We have talked a lot this morning. Um, let's start again with the Michi Johnson thing and, and just to go back to the initial reaction when you saw it. I thought Michi would put his name in the NBA draft. Um, I probably was 60, 40, 65, 35 that he would be back. But I thought it would be either the University of South Carolina or the NBA or he would try his hand at the NBA. I personally didn't think he would be drafted. I didn't think he would be good enough to catch on with the team. But we all know sometimes you get advice, people talk to you. Maybe you're just ready to go and start your professional career, even if that's overseas somewhere, Preston Thorne. Uh, the actual news of the transfer, which is what it appears to do, initially caught me off guard. And I'll explain why in just a second. But as, as we've gone, as we've talked this out this morning, as you and I have talked this through, I feel like I might have a better understanding of what's going on. Yeah, so that's not I wasn't I don't think it was the news that anybody necessarily expected but as I stated earlier we cannot be surprised when anybody enters a transfer portal in the current college athletics landscape this is this is a part of the reality that the coaches and the players are are dealing with so we've had some we've discussed it we've talked that we don't know why or what the reasons were we did we do have some some sound from Michi which I would like to recant my earlier statement when you said that he should get credit for it. And I was like, eh, but you know what? You're right. He should get credit for at least speaking, putting some word 
and voice to the decision making. So I think we have here, we have Michi here that we can come sort of hear from when we come back and talk about that. Yeah, this is Michi Johnson on Instagram Live. This is last night after the announcement comes out that he is going to transfer. Uh, I do give him credit for doing this. Not everybody, Preston, can have a publicist who writes us a great speech. Correct. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, this young man, I do, though, like how he is addressing this head on. He's not just putting something up on on X or Instagram that's just words and hiding from and disappearing. Uh, this is Michi Johnson. Again, this is an Instagram live video that he put up last night. It's about two minutes and seven seconds where he addresses what is taking place and to an extent why he is leaving. Here is Michi Johnson last night on transferring from South Carolina. But yeah, I just want to say I appreciate all the fans out there from USC, bro. Like, it was a great two years. You know what I'm saying? Great two years. And uh, definitely had some of the most fun I ever had in my life. You know what I'm saying? Coming there. Um, but at the end of the day, where we at now, I just got to make the best decision for me. There's going to be so many talks. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was talking to these people, doing this, doing that. Like, I haven't talked to nobody yet. I haven't did. At the end of the day, like I said, like most people... I understand, like, I love I love South Carolina. You know, I, I learned a lot about coming out here, um, and I appreciate the university for everything, you know what I'm saying? Coach Paris, the whole staff, everybody, like, they really took care of me, made me feel like family. You know, every game, everybody made me feel like family, um, especially being so far away from home and everything. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, a lot of people going to say what they want, like I said. People going to talk about loyalty and stuff like that. At the end of the day, like, most of y'all are not in my position, so y'all not gonna understand, you know what I'm saying, what it is, and, uh, you know, why certain things gotta be done, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like I said, I gotta do what's best for me and my family, um, and that's that, you know, like, but all, all love still with SC, everybody here, all love with the Trump, uh, with the coaching staff, you feel me? Like, like I said, they took care of me since day one, everybody, you know, took me in since day one, um, you know, and I, at the end of the day, I had, I had to get all this on my own. Like, people going to say what they want, but I had to make the name. I had to do this. So, like I said, all glory to God still, too. Um, and, yeah, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some people going to be hurt. Some people not going to understand. But, uh, again, it's the best decision I had to make for me and my family. Um, and there's no bad issues, no bad blood with uh, South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? South Carolina was, was great to me and my family. Um, you know, if anybody come here after and not making a bad decision, you know, Coach Perez is a great coach. He's he's very, very good at being able to develop players and take their game to the next level, which he did with me. So, again, all love go to them. I, I, I we're being serious. I, I just want to say this again, and I and I will joke later on about me and the hype for spring football and the f so forth and so on. And this is no offense to meet you. What he did is hard. For, for if you ever just if you, if you ever have to make a video, turn it on for two minutes and make a make a what what was essentially a public apology, yeah. Almost that that's you mentioned it earlier that this wasn't a moment. This this felt more like an apology from Michi Johnson for his decision to transfer. He didn't have a publicist. He didn't have somebody write that for him. I do kind of wish he would have. I, you know, this felt spur of the moment, and and you put yourself in these. I don't know if we want to call him kids. He's 22, I think. Uh, but you put this in. You young put, adults. Young adults. You put it in. You put yourself in his shoes. Uh, he's trying to do the right thing. And in an, in an era where it is the easiest thing is to just decide to transfer and put out a statement on Twitter, as you joked earlier, respect my decision, no interviews, please, so forth and so on. I, 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 think, I think instead of being upset with him, Gamecock fans have to go, all right, I get it. I don't, I now don't believe this is NIL related. I don't believe this is NIL related. I believe this is an attempt to go back home so that his family for one year can actually watch him be a star in the arena. Um, J.C. Sherbert brought that up a little bit about about how some of the families, uh, more of the families able to travel to Pittsburgh to watch him play against Oregon because it's closer, how his dad uh, really was only able to get down at the end of the season. His dad, Sonny Johnson, is the coach at Garfield Heights. You know, if you've ever had a, a, a family member that coaches high school sports, you know how difficult it is. I, I'll just say this. I don't like it. it. It's not good for the program, but 
Preston, the more I kind of listen to that, I feel this is a young man trying to do right by a university. Oh, he's trying to do he's trying to do right by and this is this is the issue. He's trying to do right by all these parties involved. And that's not gonna work, Michi, ever in your life. And so when you have to make a decision, there are going to inevitably be people that are disappointed. Now, you can choose who you want to disappoint, whether you want to disappoint the institution, whether you want to disappoint your coaches, or maybe there will be a point, Michi, in your life, you might have to disappoint your family by making choices that you need to make. This is a part of the growing process, and this is what we all say. They're all growing. They're all learning. We're getting a chance to watch young people grow and go through their processes. Just unfortunately, we get a chance to see all of this. And I'll, and I'll concur with you. It is not easy to just to pick up a phone and talk and express all of these probably varying emotions that are going through his head. So kudos to him for for doing that. That doesn't change the fact that, yes, people can be disappointed. Yes, people can have expected things because everybody was hoping for the potential to do something special. And I also tell say would say to Michi this, hey, listen, man, when you leave home, going back home, it might not be the that's same right. home. And that's what you're going to have to figure out. I, we're speculating that he's going to be ending up at a school where, where he was previously previously was. Who knows? But you never know how these things are going to work out when you try and go back somewhere. So good luck, young man. You are about to – you made a grown-up decision, and you're going to have to live with the grown-up consequences. And, again, I'll just say this, and this is not a knock on Michi, but it's listening to him try and get through that as opposed to Lenora Sellers handle the media yesterday. It's why I've – starting to the hype it's hard, hard I, I get it. it's 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 not easy it's not easy and kudos to him we'll also let you listen to another young adult in Shador Sanders who got to go in front of the media Ooh. yesterday and, and we'll let you listen to that coming up in the next segment as he is talks about the adversity that his multi-million dollar lifestyle has created hard times. over the years for where Shador it's is at. Rough. We'll, we'll get into that. Let's get out to the Love Chevy phone lines, though. Jason wants to weigh in on Michi Johnson and the transfer portal. Jason, how you doing this morning? What's on your mind? Morning, guys. Yeah, so I can't 100% agree with Preston. None of us should be surprised at this. I mean, this is the current climate. Probably the people that are surprised are kind of the old crusty dudes, you know, that just don't get it anyways. But in this that is a lot of respect for him. Most players wouldn't do that. I, I mean, he gave us a lot of joy, and I have ultimate respect for him now because he just came out and said, I mean, he's got to, you got to make choices in life. We talk about, you know, college people and high school people going out into the real world, and they and they're not necessarily prepared to to face certain things. Well, he clearly is because you're right, Preston. He is going. You're going to have to make choices in life, and and. And sometimes you're going to disappoint people. It's it's a shame. I think we all can agree that Lamont did a great job in the transfer portal. So hopefully he can recreate that. But yeah, I mean we've got to get. And even if it is NIL related, that's just you know that's where we're at right now. And frankly, you know us as a Carolina fan base have to step up with the funds if we're going to compete. So I, I, I do a lot with the university, and I'm, I keep hearing it all the time about, I mean, they're desperate for NIL money because we're falling behind. So, Yeah, I mean, we'll, we will see with NIL, obviously. This is, I think, over the next year with now, with all of these coming together, Garnet Trust, Carolina Rise, what South Carolina can do. And, and, and unfortunately, which probably not is what people want to hear, uh, it falls on the fans, Preston Thorne, to to donate the money, and I, I I can't sit here and tell anybody to go in and donate that kind of money that they may be doing. Um, that you do whatever you want with your money. I I don't know if it's if it's nil related. That that's tough for me to tell anybody to do that. Uh, a couple here, RJ weighing in on the um, the Firehouse Subs text line. He says, Bill, 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 what are you going to do when he goes to Auburn or Texas A and M? Too gullible. If he goes there, that will, I think, change. Does that change people's opinions if he goes to a school different than Ohio State? Uh, yeah, it would, it would change. It would change my perspective a little bit. It wouldn't. It wouldn't change my opinions because even as as the caller stated, if this is a if this is an opportunity for him to increase his funds with NIL, then more power to him. Just good luck. 
<laughs> you make a grown up choice, you're gonna have to face grown up consequences. That's all I can. That's all I would say to any young person at, at that age. Good luck. 803-404-6100. We'll let you listen to a a young man next. We'll talk. Actually, we'll talk a couple things here. Uh, what is the word you want to use here? Transactional. Transactional. Yeah, we got this from from our Twitter user Andrew Johnson, and I think it was something that's very interesting as we talk about. Everything, everything, everything we've always considered. Obviously, I can get back to bashing youth sports here really quick. Good. Well, well, what? Uh, uh, well, this this next segment could be very entertaining. <laughs> we'll let Preston roll on that. You're listening to Bill Gunn and Preston Thorne, Jen Jensen. It's the early game. Preston here. Let me tell you about my friends at Absolute Glass, the premier glass company of the Midlands, offering auto, home, and business glass repair. So if your glass is damaged, shattered, cracked, or broken, they can handle the job. If it's a cracked windshield, that's no problem. They'll come out to your location and replace it for you. Yes, they will come to you, wherever you are, whether you're at school, home, work. It doesn't matter. Absolute Glass will come out to your location, replace it for you, usually for free, and they work directly with the insurance company to take away the headache. Now, if you're looking to increase the value of your home with new windows or mirrors, Absolute Glass will come out and take care of all of that for you. Windows, mirrors, shower enclosures. I say all the time, if you can see through it, Ray and Marianne at Absolute Glass can do it. So check them out online at AbsoluteGlassInc.com. That's online at AbsoluteGlassInc.com. All right, already. All right, carpet 30 in three, two, one. It's time to refresh your home for spring with Zero's Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. Traditional carpet cleaners use soaps and harsh chemicals that leave a sticky residue, attracting dirt over time. When you call the experts at Zero's, you will enjoy services that stay cleaner longer without dirt attracting residue. Right now, mention me, Bill Gunner at 1075 The Game, and get three rooms of carpet cleaned for only $129. Book online at zeroscolumbia.com. Carpet 15. Three, two, one. This spring, check your carpets off your spring cleaning list with Zeros Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. Mention me, Bill Gunner at 107.5 The Game, and you'll get three rooms of carpet clean for only $129. Book online at zeroscolumbia.com. Duck 30. Three, two, one. You know it's springtime when you can't stop sneezing every five seconds. That's why I call Zero Res Air Duct Cleaning so I can breathe easier in my home. You'd be surprised by the amount of pollen, dust, and bacteria that is sitting in your duct system. For this month only, mention me, Bill Gunner, at 107.5 The Game, and you'll get $50 off your next air duct cleaning. Use promo code AIR50 when scheduling online at zeroscolumbia.com. Duct 15 in 3, 2, one. Breathe easier with Zero Res Air Duct Cleaning. For this month only, mention me, Bill Gunner, at 107.5 The Game, and you'll get $50 off your next Air Duct Cleaning. Use promo code AIR50 when scheduling online at zerescolumbia.com.
We have a few incidences we do need to let you know about. Broad River Road near I-20, also in Lexington, Old Cherokee at Old Chapin. Kitty Wake near St. David's Church Road, I-26 eastbound at exit 91. Also Clemson at Hard Scrabble and uh, Highway 302 at South Lake Drive. And then Highway 378 at I-26, right there in front of Lexington Medical Center. Big snarl right now. There's a car upside down, traffic being a- impacted both directions. So if there's any way to avoid that intersection right now at 378 around uh, Lexington Medical Center, that would be ideal. Your forecast for today, maybe a scattered sh- stray shower, uh, maybe later tonight, 70 for the high, 72 with some thunder possible. It's 57 right now. Welcome back in 803-404-6100. Welcome back to the early game. Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, Jen Jensen on the board. We've been having a lot of discussion today. When we try and figure out what we're going to talk to, the content gods always come through. They do. <laughs> they always they always come through. We just figured out what we was going to do with this stretch between now and the women playing. We didn't know what was going to happen. And unfortunately... Or fortunately for him, or however, who knows how it's going to shake out, uh, Michi Johnson has entered entered into the transfer portal. And it's led to a lot of conversation. And one of our listeners, appreciate you, and I said Andrew Johnson, Andrew Borgett, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He said his text was, I think the word we're looking for is transactional. All of these are transactional relationships. Basically, you do for me, I do for you, and we keep it moving. And... I think that hits the nail on the head of what all of this is turned into. And I would zoom out a little bit because when I hear them talking about, obviously I work at the college, I work with college age students, it's all transactional. There's a big difference between the idea of getting a degree at a place or getting an education at a place, right? When you get a degree at a place, you just fill it out, making sure you go through the course load, get the number of number of prerequisites you need, and you just fill out the check work, you get your degree. But that's very different than getting an education at a place. And unfortunately, all of this has turned into a big transactional process where we just check the marks off, and it doesn't stop at high school, college because I worked in high school too. We try and get our kids in the best classes so that what? So that they can get the best GPA. So that what? So that they can go to college. But it doesn't stop there because in junior high, can we get them to take algebra one in seventh grade? So why? They could be paired for eighth grade. So what? So that they can get the scholarship. When? In high school. There. In college. It doesn't go there. Elementary school. Ooh, we got to make sure we get them to this school. Ooh, I want to make sure I get them in the right daycare so that this daycare can get them in the right school on the right. It's all transactional. And what I'm saying is, we are just seeing the prospects, the the fruit of what we, the adults, have created in, in society. This is where we are. Education has become more transactional and f- opposed to the phrase of transformational. Okay. Something's supposed to happen to you, not you're supposed to just get something at the end. And that's where we are. So if it's just, if it's all a transaction, it doesn't matter whether I get my degree from Ohio State, USC, Auburn, Texas A&M, because... It's just a piece of paper to a lot of the way what we have turned this into. And that's unfortunately where we are. Yeah, I, I you look, there's so many factors in transferring. This isn't all about Michi Johnson. Yeah, no, um, this, this, this is a is, great example. This is, this, is, this is more about what some of you are going with. And I don't think it's also all about NIL uh, as well. It is the opening of the door to to again more power for players as we see the evolution of the college football game and wherever it's going with with conferences and with rules such as transfer rules and everything it, i i don't know what is most important 
uh, in this day and age. Um, I, I do think, going back to what you're talking about, how much fans are going to listen to players moving forward. Uh, Pup Howard said <laughs> all the right things. Because he's trying to do that. He said all the right things. Did interviews. I can't remember if you were with me when we did an interview with him. I heard that one. It was it was awesome. Um, but, yeah, when he signed, he said all the right things. Shane Beamer talked about how he'd received a text message who basically from a player said he would die for the university. And it was Pup Howard. A year later, Pup Howard's like, I, I got to get head back yeah. to Florida, guys. Sorry. Uh, got, got some stuff I got to do. You know, Michi Johnson has been very, very positive. Behind us, there is a white uh, uh, a cardboard for Garnet Trust. Michi's name is on it. He's been here in these studios. Uh, you know, nothing against these kids. They're allowed to make their own decisions. That's what they fought for. This is part of what they fought for for years, right? A little bit of power to do what they want. So when you say transactional, I don't I don't know if the education is, is it a part of this at all. Well, that's, they didn't create this. This right. is what we've created. And, again, when you go into the idea of what they are fighting for, how many of us have moved our kid from one travel team to the next travel mm -hmm. team because this team plays in that tournament and they're a little bit higher seeded than them. So we got to make sure we travel over here so that they can play in this. When, when did, it doesn't stop, it doesn't start in college. It starts way before this idea. Transfer in high schools. Moving travel teams, getting coaches moved. I have a problem. Helicopter. All of this stuff is the system that we have created. And again, I would say, and this is why I think why I have such strong feelings towards the university, because when I went to this university, I was able to get an education from this university. I had professors that poured into me. Dr. Bobby Donaldson, Cleveland Sellers, um, Valinda Littlefield. These are people that I visited with. I went to class with them. I got an education with them. I met my friends there. All of those things that are happening, I got news feed. That's not really what we're doing in college as a whole now. And so to expect it to come from the college athletes, I don't know if that's a fair expectation because they're simply just playing the system as it's designed for them to play in. Uh, Jonathan Olson did say that you were quite the studious student athlete well, that, that, you, I, I was, that you poured yourself into it, though. I did. I did. And because I had people that... I was way, better, way, way better grades in, in college than because I had professors that cared. And I had uh, people that I thought cared. And I had people that you could talk to. And you, this idea of this being trans, transactional, I think that's a great idea. So if everything is transactional, then nothing really counts, right? But I would just warn these young people that transaction can only go to a limit. And at that limit, there's going to be nothing behind the next door. So... Good luck for the young people and also for us parents raising our children in a transactional way. Again, how are you trying to put your child, which daycare are you? Do you want to get them in this daycare so yep. that they can make sure that they go to this school district so that this coach over here is really good and he's recruiting my son, but I want to let him play on this travel team. It's not just Michi or Michi's dad. It's all of us. We're all here. We're all contributing to this system. 803-404-6100. A lot of really good thoughts there. We'll come back. We'll wrap that up. We'll wrap it up with a guy who's had to fight the system, perennial underdog, a guy who came up, got it from the mud, Shador Sanders. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much is his rings and necklace worth? We'll, we'll figure that out. You'll hear Shador Sanders yesterday uh, fighting, fighting for fighting for his rights. Been tough. Or his right to party, one of the two. 803-404-6100 is the early game. This is Jen with CHW Cabinetry in Lexington. All that demolition that we had to do in our kitchen after that flood it totally had to be gutted. 
We needed to install new cabinets, but he had to go through the process of picking them out and picking out accessories and all of that. They were so helpful in doing that. Then they give us that photorealistic rendering that helped us pull the other elements of the kitchen together when you have to go find the backsplash and you have to go find the, the flooring and the countertops and all of that it was very, very helpful. But, you know, they do more than just kitchens at CHW. They have closet work that uh, they can do to make your closets more functional. Maybe you have a pantry that is in need of some assistance. They can help with that as well. If you're looking to create a workspace so you can work from home, they can help with that as well. Visit chwcabinetry.com or call them today at 803-520-6837. Be sure to tell them Jen Jensen sent you. CHW Cabinetry in Lexington. Passion from inspiration to installation. Clemson Road at Hardscrabble Road, an accident there. Still working an earlier tie-up, Kitty Wake Drive near St. David's Church. Old Cherokee at Old Chapin, an accident reported. Broad River Road near I-20 and a major slowdown, Highway 378 at I-26. There is an accident in front of the hospital, and it's just kind of a snarled up mess. So if you can avoid that area, if possible, again, that's uh, Highway 378 at I-26. The accident in front of Lexington Medical Center. 70 will be our high today. Might see a stray shower late in the evening. Doesn't look like it's going to wash out a baseball game. 
at this point. 72 tomorrow, thunderstorms possible, morning showers on Thursday. But right now it's overcast and it's 57 on the early game. Eight thirty four. As we roll along, a uh, reminder: the craft beer card is back. You can spend thirty dollars at a brewery at twelve craft beer locations. A three hundred and sixty dollar value for only seventy nine dollars. Go to one zero seven five thegamecom dot com and click on the sweet deals tab. Again, it is the craft beer card that is back. You can spend thirty dollars at twelve craft beer locations again a 360 dollars value for only 79 dollars just going over to 1075 thegamecom and click on sweet deals and pick yourself up a craft beer card 803-404-6100 let's go back out to the love chevy phone lines ray wants to weigh in on the transfer portal situation ray how you doing what's on your mind this morning hey good morning good morning yeah, you know, I was thinking about this whole thing with Michi Johnson, and I know a lot of people like to refer to this time of age with athletes as the Wild Wild West. It's not the Wild Wild West. It's called an open free market. And finally, it's, you know, it's invaded the college realm. And I, and I mean invade in a positive way. I mean, you know, we see what Michi can do on the court. We know what his capabilities are. You know, I think he was second team all SEC or – something like that. Well, we see that so do, so does a hundred other schools. And, you know, I, I can't fault him, you know, from a selfish point of view, I wish you'd stay because I'm a Gamecock fan. But, you know, these athletes, they, they have a timetable. I don't know what the average age of a basketball player when the age out is. I imagine it's, what, 32, 33? I mean, so he's out there, you know, trying to get what he can for him and his family. And I understand it. I, I wish him the best, but boy, I sure hope we got something uh, to hold CMB down. Because my goodness, I'll tell you, it's it's tough as a fan. But at the same point, I understand a free market. I mean, we all have the right to go pursue careers where we want to pursue it. You know, if money is the objectivity, whatever it is. But I wish him nothing but the best. But uh, oh man, I, I there again for selfish reasons, I wish he would stay. But I fully understand. Hey guys, thanks for letting me talk. Appreciate the phone call, Ray. 803-404-6100. So from one player maybe searching for the bag, who knows, to another player who's known all about the bag, but it's been hardship after hardship for Shador Sanders. It's been tough. Well, uh, Shador, I, I, you know what? I can't even. I don't think I can do it very well here because I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. We've been hearing from people directly, and so let me not paraphrase them. Jane, can we hear from Shador Sanders, number twenty-three on the list, please, ma'am? I came from a private school, so at the end of the day, I dealt with a lot of negativity, a lot of hate, a lot of everything I done dealt with already year after year. I came from a small private school. Uh, all the other kids was going big, you know, power five, and they went to big 6A, Texas 6A schools and stuff. I don't see those same kids around. I don't see them excelling in their programs or whatever they're doing. So I've always been against the odds, like, in different ways. Yeah. Let's start with let's start with the odds. Let's start with the odds. Um oh, all righty. Uh, anyway. <laughs> let's start with some odds. Okay, uh let's start with nature. let's do nature versus nurture here. <laughs> what would you like to do? Nature or nurture? All right, let's go nurture for a second. Nurture. All right. Not saying that money is everything, but Shadur, you have grown up with significant odds in your favor as far as money is concerned. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's probably better since we've been having this conversation, it's probably better to have the burden of having so much money that people dislike you whether that your not. father has so much yeah. money which well, in turn is you correct. but probably better to have that burden than the burden of not having not having any money oh by the way did you mention his father so let's go to nature your father is not is one of the greatest athletes to ever walk the planet earth so you got a very good hand genetically sir so you had a very fair deal as far as 
the money was concerned, and you got a pretty good draw in the genetic lottery, Shadur. Also, Bill, he went to a small private school. Would you by happen to chance know what that small private school's name is? I wanted to look this up. Trinity Christian School. School. Trinity Christian School. Yes, he went to Trinity Christian School after he attended what school? Oh, I don't know this. Prime Academy. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, for those that are, don't know, Prime would be connected to Coach Prime. Who's Coach Prime? Deion Sanders. Yes, the small school that Shadura went to was his father's school that was created for him to attend. Such odds. It's been so difficult. Let's play that again. Just now that you've heard it once, now just re-listen to Shador Sanders. Basically, also, also, by the way, just telling the 6A kids, all you kids at the 6A schools in Texas that are football players, that I don't, I don't see you here. I've, I've overcome the odds where you guys had it easy. Listen again to Shador Sanders. I came from a private school, so... At the end of the day, I dealt with a lot of negativity, a lot of hate, a lot of everything I done dealt with already year after year. I came from a small private school. Uh, all the other kids was going big, you know, power five, and they went to big 6A, Texas 6A schools and stuff. I don't see those same kids around. I don't see them excelling in their programs or whatever they're doing. So I've always been against the odds, like, in different ways. By the way, just, just also just the also for for the record, just just for the record, if he means that all those those six A Texas kids were going power five and, and he didn't, uh he chose that path. For he was a four star quarter. South Carolina did offer him. He he didn't and, pick and, and he picked where? Why? I believe. Let me go back and look. I wanna say I, I let me just make sure of what I'm going to say first, but I believe he picked Florida Atlantic first mm -hmm. before then his dad got the Jackson State job and was like, oh, I'm going to go play for dad. Yeah, because he's also trying to play the, oh, you know, I went to a small humble roots at the HBCU and it's just been really tough. You went to play for your dad, sir. And that was another thing, and we didn't get a chance. His celebration where he's waving his wrist in front of everybody. Yeah, it's with, like, the very, with the very expensive watch. Sir. And, and honestly, he didn't really articulate his position very well, so perhaps a little more time in the classroom might benefit him as well from it, his little private school. It might have, well, this is true, because I don't know if you can read up on what happened with Prime Academy, but there's a reason why... They did why not he, make it. Yeah, a reason why he didn't finish at Prime Academy is because Prime Academy did not work. Uh, but here are some Texas 6A high school quarterbacks who, I don't know, maybe you've heard of. You ever heard of somebody by the name of Baker Mayfield? Guys made it. Done all right. Jalen Hurts? Seems to be doing all right. Kyler Murray? Yeah. Maybe not the one you want to bring up, but he's made it to the pros. Jalen Milrow? <laughs> are you rolling along? So, I mean, there are some guys who've done okay, Shador. He, I, this is, it really is fascinating. Year two of the, the Deion Sanders era at Colorado. We'll see them back in the Big 12. And... I mean, you got you got him, you got Travis Hunter. I, I mean, it's all very fascinating what's still continuing to happen out there. Also, who Dion said, well, you know, when they go into the NFL, I'm going to pick their team that they go to. Yeah, also. Dion's because uh, you know it's the path has been so difficult for Shador that my daddy is going to pick the team that I play in the NFL for. I, yeah, he if you didn't so see tough. Dion basically came out and said that Shador and Travis Hunter will not play for certain teams in the NFL when they go into the draft next year in, in the 2025 draft. Uh, I, th I think even uh, oh, uh, what was the balls? Uh, Lamello? LaVar? Uh, Le LaVar. Uh -huh. Even LaVar is in L.A. So we're going like, ooh, ooh, I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, LaVar has, I don't think LaMelo would be in Charlotte right now. <laughs> no, no, he would They got beat again last night. And, and Press and I were talking off air about tickets available for me to take my son. And I was like, they're, they're pretty cheap, actually. Even the really good ones are, are really cheap. So. Oh, yeah. Um, Dion talks a lot. And we pay him attention because he's one of the – He's been around in our lives. He's one of the greatest athletes. He's earned the platform. We can hear Dion talk. That wasn't the only conversation Dion had. He talked about recruiting and how he doesn't do it. And Dion was on the heater this this past week. He's fired but, up. Th but he has a book to sell, so obviously there's a reason why. He's fired up. 803-404-6100. That's how you can weigh in this morning. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up here. The Tuesday morning edition of the early game. <laughs>
We do have a few accidents. We do have a few accidents still to let you know about. Clemson Road at Hardscrabble Road. Also, I-126 eastbound just after Greystone Boulevard. Kitty Wake near St. David's Church Road. Old Cherokee Road at Old Chapin. Broad River Road near I-20 and a big tie-up. Highway 378 at I-26. An accident in front of Lexington Medical Center has traffic impacted both directions. So if you can avoid 378 at I-26, might be a good idea to do that right now. Your forecast for today, looking for high of 70 with a stray shower later in the evening. Thunderstorm possible tomorrow, 72 for the high morning showers and 66 for Thursday. It is 57 right now. Some rain in the forecast for the next few days. Is your roof ready to handle that? Have you even thought about your roof and any kind of leak detection and leak prevention? If not, well, start thinking about it and call Mid-State Roofing today. With their 24-hour-a-day, 7-day-a-week call center, you will speak with either a on-call technician or with a Mid-State Roofing employee. and They can help line up a maintenance contract for you and make sure that your business will be safe and dry and running. And that is what it is is important is that that is your business or your home is operating properly so call mid state roofing today 803-356-1919 or you can visit them online midstateroofing.com from high rises to hospitals manufacturing to industrial midstate roofing's de uh, designs and installs are bonded systems with a protective guarantee call midstate roofing today 803-356-1919 tell them bill gunner sent you Final segment of the program, 803-404-6100. If you want to join us, I uh, do want to tell you about my good friends at the Ecton Law Firm. If you've received one of the IRS's dreaded notices of intent to levy or 
any other bad news from the IRS, we are in tax season. It's time to contact the Ecton Law Firm for a free consultation. 803-771-9800. They have a local team dedicated to resolving your income or business tax issues, and they'll do it for good. They understand the challenges you face, and that's why John Ecton and his team are ready to offer you the peace of mind you deserve with proven Local solutions that have helped thousands of families and businesses just like yours escape the IRS maze. So take the first steps towards a worry-free life. Call the Ecton Law Firm today for your free consultation, 803-771-9800. You can visit them on the web, ectonlawfirm.com. That's E-C-T-O-N, lawfirm.com. Again, get that free consultation, 803-771-9800. Steve weighs in this morning on our Fry House Subs text line. Hey, guys, sorry if I missed it earlier. Who's the biggest villain, Angel Reese or Caitlin Clark? We don't know. We're Load, pending. Loading. We're pending. But Caitlin Clark doing the best she could last night to slightly edge ahead, <laughs> slightly edge ahead by playing a home game, playing a home game against West Virginia in the round of 32, and for some reason scoring a basket, and proceeding to tell somebody, <laughs> anybody, to shut the bleep up. And it's on camera, and uh, there is no denying some lip reading. You have to be a very bad lip reader to not catch Caitlin Clark last night in a home game. I, we don't know who she was yelling at. Which, let me be very clear, I support the use of language on the court, 100%. We just don't know who she was talking to because she wasn't talking to a player. It was directed at the general y'all, except the y'all was Iowa fans. I don't know what was happening there. But, yeah, you want to use language on the court, please. I mean, please, Caitlin, please. I mean, look, uh, this is from For the Win. Uh, It says the game, game camera showed Clark seemingly telling the crowd. It says to, I, I read it, I read it as, Oh, maybe it was get up. I read, but other people, well, you saw the tweet that I showed you this morning uh-huh. where it's saying shut. Now, for the win, is saying get the bleep up to fire up the. I will Hawkeye just say fans. this, and this is a deep cut. There hasn't been any, anybody who's delivered that phrasing since Will Muschamp. Yes, she. <laughs> she they de- delivered the sounding of that word where you could see the mouth wording the words. She might be up on the Muschamp scale, which, um, by the way, I still think was Muschamp's greatest moment. In, it was. In and, and, but even her teammates were kind of in behind her looking like, uh. <laughs> maybe maybe she was saying shut the bleep up to her father. Yeah. Told her. <laughs> for scolding her, yes. Maybe, yes, day. for scolding her in game one. And now she's like, I'm playing well. You sit in your father's seat and you shut the bleep up. It's my game, Dad. My game. Uh, <laughs> and I couldn't figure out who to pull for last night. <laughs> like I said, we've been in a dilemma because we don't know what we want to happen. We want both of these teams to lose, but we still also want to see them play each other because we want that car wreck to happen. We want, we to, want get to, that, to see that. Get to that game. I yeah. was slightly, I think if, if you, it, as it was back and forth, because the crowd was much like Colonial Life Arena. It was raucous. It was her final home game of her career. Kind of, I think I was pulling for West Virginia, but I will admit. But that it, violates your no Cinderella it, in the scale. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it Trend matters news. on that side gotcha. of that one. I got you. Uh, on the scale of Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese, I think right now I lean Caitlin Clark slightly <laughs> because I feel like Angel Reese, Angel Reese waving at the Middle Tennessee State girl or Middle Tennessee girl the other day, slightly worse than Caitlin Clark cursing at the crowd or whomever last night. Also, if we're going to do this in wrestling form, Angel Reese has a great manager. She yeah. has, like, the best manager walking her to the ring. You know, and you, keep, you keep seeing the clips of her just mow down people on the court, you know, when there's no ball possession in, in play, anything like that. So if we're doing if we're doing wrestling here, I don't – it's still it's still very much pick your poison. I, I will say Dan Lebetard, who we both like, had a great segment on Kim Mulkey yesterday and her threats to sue the Washington Post. 
and he basically said it won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever comes out, said the attorneys for the Washington Post, they spend their entire life making sure these stories cannot be de- turned into defamation suits. Dan Levitard, it's a clip. You can go to their Twitter account. It's about two minutes. And he's basically saying, like, he's calling Kim Mulkey's bluff. Yeah. Like, you ain't going to, you're not going to do anything. Yeah. They've been working on this for what, two years, this yeah. story? Yes. Kent Babb, by the way, University of South Carolina graduate. Go Cox. Just, just throwing there it out you there. Go. Kent Babb, I believe formerly. J School, proud. Uh, Bob Gillespie can say, uh, I believe formerly of the state. Uh, Interesting show. Today. Yeah, I didn't know he was going to turn up in the last half, but man, great show. Interesting. We'll see show. what we'll see what tomorrow brings us. We will. We will. Y'all have a a great day. Gamecock baseball tonight, six thirty pregame right here on one hundred seven five. The game at six fifteen. We'll talk to you tomorrow.